Okay, so thank you, Victoria, and uh, the opportunity from the Life uh, uh, Improvement Science Conference to present my case. Um, so my presentation is basically uh, divided into <clears throat> Just a second, because I have a bit of adjustment. Uh, so the aim of this presentation uh, is to pitch for the mindfulness as a discipline, as a research area, to find uh, somewhere in the LIS uh, framework or research. And then the second aim of the, of the presentation is the overlaps and the conversion of the two research fields that how they connect with each other very, very, very subtle way. And there are uh, factors where they overlap also each other. And then there are some challenges and obstacles and the conclusion uh, at the end. And then I, we would see that if this marriage is going to happen between uh, the life improvement science and the mindfulness. So uh, mindfulness is defined um, as means by paying attention in a particular way <clears throat> uh, on purpose in present moment and non-judgmentally. It is defined by Kabat and Sin and in the early 1990s. And uh, over a period of time, like in the last few decades, uh, this uh, field of mindfulness has emerged as both interdisciplinary and tra transdisciplinary field. There are uh, major contributions uh, from psychology and philosophy into mindfulness. Uh, the uh, the majority of the research is uh, conducted in Western world is based on the psychological uh, understanding of mindfulness. Whereas when the philosophy uh, fits into the uh, mindfulness overall scheme of thoughts, then it has two goals, which is both the mundane goals of uh, material uh, well-being and also has some profane non-material gain of like spiritual enlightenment and so on. Now we will see uh, the, the, some of the methods like in the mindfulness space, there are some of the uh, psychological methods which are used uh, are like mindfulness-based cognitive therapy and some of the other methods which have a philosophical base is psychophilosophical approaches like the first person report or phenomenology. The other point which I want to mention here is that <clears throat> in, the, uh, in the current studies of uh, research and studies in the, uh, in the Western world is also about, mostly about the Buddhist meditation techniques. And uh, though yoga has been studied as a mindfulness technique in the previous century across the Western world, uh, but it has got uh, lost its connection in between, but now again it is uh, caught the attention of scientists and researchers. Uh, there are other uh, Western and other traditions are also emerging in the field of uh, mindfulness like Tai Chi and other fields. Uh, why mindfulness is very critical is because one of the goals of the uh, life improvement science is the well-doing of the, of the majority or the most of the humanity, whereas mindfulness can really contribute to the well-doing of people uh, because the mindfulness-based meditation uh, techniques or interventions available either free or else with volunteer teachers or with a very, very small fee charge by the, uh, the teachers or the volunteers. I have problem in shifting my screen. Sorry. Uh, the three components of the foundation of the life improvement science. Now we will see how these three components of the life improvement science foundation and mindfulness connect each other. The well-doing in the in life, which is the first and foremost uh, objective of the life improvement science, or we could say the goal. The second point is the individual well-being, and the second and the long-term goal of the overall improvement of the humanity. In my understanding, if the first two goals are achieved, I think the the long-term goal of overall improvement of humanity would be the result and the product of the first two goals. Uh, so where, where this is uh, converging between these two uh, disciplines. So you could see uh, one of the very recent studies, I think probably published in last month or two months before, 
by the mindfulness initiative uk uh, the finding says that the uh, it brings out the positive intent and enhanced capacity of the individual and the overall well-being of others so if you see the even no, now the mindfulness as a discipline uh, also uh, talking about not only about the individual well-being but the recent results are also showing the positive intent towards the enhanced capacity of the individual and led to the overall well-being of the others the positive outcome of the the second finding is the positive outcomes of the mindfulness contribute to the enhanced capacity and intentional action that's where the, the these intentional actions are uh, mindful actions having both individual and collective benefits of these interventions so it's very clear that from individual to the well-being of others mindfulness is contributing so uh, let's see uh, in a sense of, uh, of drawing some parallel between where is the subtle connection and what are some of the overlaps we could see that life improvement science seems to be uh, looking at whatever is presented to us seems to be a very multidisciplinary field transdisciplinary in, in its approach whereas we when we look at mindfulness it's it's also a very multidisciplinary field but predominantly it is a psychology <laughs> and philosophic uh, uh, based contribution so i prefer to say that it's a more of a psycho philosophical and transdisciplinary interdisciplinary field uh, the focus uh, in uh, lis is effectiveness of well doing or having less ill doing whereas the focus on in the mindfulness research is on the psychological well being the psychological physio physiological well being and then there is a higher eclean which is which we call the transcendental or higher degree of experiences definitely that the third uh, focus is is more related to the some of the eastern traditions of meditation technique uh, whereas when it comes to the definition of these two disciplines i think even the discussions yesterday i think uh, lis is still emerging uh, to find the right definition uh, even being established discipline mindfulness is also uh, have sometimes uh, struggling struggle with the right definition but i think it's somewhat settled uh, i could say that lis is an emerging discipline whereas uh, mindfulness seems to be a little bit established what are the some of the challenges we face see challenges we feel is because the life improvement if, if the goal is is the life improvement and we see mindfulness as a catalyst or as an intervention there is a very uh, interesting fact that technology though technology is helping it to make it accessible to large part of the people but at the same time uh, mobile app based tech companies are becoming a, a very a big giant tech giants uh, it is reported in one of the reports where i where i have quoted here is that suggests that the meditation market is worth 1.2 billion and its market is going at an annual growth of 11% so uh, why i have mentioned this because we uh, uh, it has become very over commercialization and uh, <clears throat> and the it does not actually fit into the lack of conscious driven approach and that could be a very uh, great obstacle in long term well doing of the humanity which is again one of the goals of the uh life improvement science so what is the conclusion uh, i could uh, conclude that mindfulness uh, has number of goals which complements the life improvement science goals uh, as we have seen in these two uh, th three foundations of lis and I, i could see some of the overlappings or complementary goals of the life improvement science uh, complementing to the mindfulness uh, goals the second thing i i think while preparing for this presentation i could understand that overlap between lis and mindfulness is unavoidable because they both talk about well being and subjective well being and objective well being so uh, and subjective and objective deliberations are very common in both so even in the discussions we could see uh, from the day one that there is a lot of deliberations about subjectivity and objectivity which is very common in mindfulness research as well both uh, disciplines have diverse views on an appropriate definitions definitions and development of definition go hand in hand in my opinion like if we try to define what is democracy in in certain words it will be very difficult and we are still evolving what is democracy in terms of definition or a very pertinent question for all of us 
uh, as a seeker is what is self, embodied self, non-embodied self, soul exists or not. And so it is right from the Western ideas of self to Jungian psychology to the Eastern or Indian philosophy concept of self, we could see the self, the definition of self is always evolving. A mindfulness seems to be an already established discipline because it started way back in since 1990s or before, emerging in other areas like subjective phenomenology and first person reports. But still, mindfulness is also facing some challenges how to capture these subjective first person uh, uh, methods uh, for, the, uh, for, for conducting uh, studies. So in, at the end, I will conclude that uh, I could see a life improvement science co core strength or co goal of a life improvement science as well doing, whereas mindfulness as a discipline talks more about well being, obviously objective and subjective well being. And he, in this side, LIS side, well doing about subjective and objective well doing. So I could see marriages on the verge. I think both the partners have to <laughs> make effort to, to make space for each other. So I end my presentation. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, yes, for drawing this connection between the life improvement science and mindfulness, uh, very insightful. I think we still have time for one or two questions if somebody wants to raise the hand. Um, okay, in the meanwhile, I have a question so I can say <laughs> And um, so do you think that uh, mindfulness is getting like, uh, like commercialized and successfully commercialized? It's uh, necessarily negative or it could be, or could it be a sign that uh, it's actually meeting a real problem in society that people it's, uh, yeah, will also like that, that it's really meeting a, a real necessity and that people are going to yeah, that, that, that if they're paying for it, it's because they're, they're really interested in it. And then it could also help this uh, to self-sustain mm -hmm. and grow. I don't know. So uh, sorry for, because my screen was getting stuck sometimes. So that was, there was some delay in between, but that's a technical glitch. Uh, no, I think uh, what I am worried about is because, see, when we talk about the subjective well-being, uh, and if the market takes over, like the way these uh, mobile application tech giants, uh, on the one hand, they have made it very accessible, like it, it can reach to so many people. But at the same time, these tech giants, I mean, they may start, uh, because I, in my opinion, there is a contradiction, because the overall development or overall well-being of the uh, humanity in the long term, if it is no more accessible, uh, which, is, uh, which, is, which should be the case, uh, then these tech giants, maybe I don't know, 10 years, five years down the line, they can start uh, charging or they can start manipulating, which we have mm. seen in other industries as well. So that's where my worry is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think I understood it better. <laughs>